So in the second part of lesson 77, we're learning how to break 80. Now I told you about Clive just getting the ball in play and I hit a tee shot for you just now. And as it happened, I hit it with a bit of draw and into the semi rough. I've had a break. The ball's broken off the shoulder of the hill and I actually run down into the middle of the fairway. So it rather makes the point. It wasn't a great shot, but because I chose a sensible line, didn't put myself under any pressure, I'm still in the game. Now before I hit this shot, I just want to tell you about the great legend of golf, Tommy Armour. He won the US Open. He was a natural born Scot. Uh, he served in World War I. And in later life, he was probably uh, the most famous and fated golf teacher of his era. And he charged a hundred bucks a lesson back in the 1960s. So he really was the superstar of golf instruction at that time. And he wrote a number of excellent golf books that would help golfers even today on how to get the golf ball around the golf course. And Tommy Armour had two golden rules. Play the shot that has the most chance of success and play the shot that makes the next shot the easiest. So let's just look what I've done. I've got the ball in play. I've got about 180 yards to the flag. I've got a hanging lie and a bare lie. Now, obviously I'd like to get on the green. But if I hit the ball down the right, there's a cavernous bunker. And there's also bunkers short and left. So I've got to have the courage to get the ball beyond the bunkers. In the bunkers, I'm going to have quite a lot of difficulty because the 50, 60 yard bunker shot, as we know, is one of the hardest to play. So I'm going to miss it, but miss it big. I'm trying to get the ball to the back of the green. If I go through the green, it's better than being in the bunkers. And, you know, we all hit bad shots. I don't mind. I accept that. What I don't like doing is hitting weak bad shots. So I'm going to commit to a a full shot, I've got to get past the bunkers. If I hit the green, it's a bonus, but I'm going to make sure I get to at least pin high. So here we go. I don't know if you can see the ball tracking. I've hit one of the nicest shots, got a nice low draw. A little bit thinner than I thought, but because I've taken enough club, the ball's actually gone to the back of the green. So the first tee shot I hit, I'd give myself six out of 10, but the line was correct. That shot was probably executed eight out of 10, but because the decision was good, it's worked out 10 out of 10. So if we look back down the fairway, I've hit the shot downhill about 180 yards. I was coming down the valley as we pan around, we can see the bunkers that were in question. So if I'd been in the first bunker, I'd had a really horrible 40 yard splash shot. Moving up to the green side bunker, you can see, yes, it would be an easier bunker shot, but it's still a hazard. If you look beyond this bunker and, it, and beyond the first bunker, there's almost a football pitch of space that we could have landed in and I'm going to make lots of chip and putt pars from the long right hand shot. And it's the nature of golf that we get punished for being short. Generally, if we get the ball to pin high and get a strong shot, there's less damage being done. So as you can see, I was aware of the bunkers on the second shot, but there was plenty of space to the right of the green and beyond. And that was a place from which I could make a chip and putt four. As it happens, I've hit the green. So let's see if I can go and make the birdie. So, as I walk from the hole to my ball, I count off three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. It's just good to have that in your mind. I know it's eighteen feet. I've got a putt light at the hill. If it drops, fine. But it's the first green of the day. I'll be happy just to roll the ball stone dead. Typically a little bit timid, but we've got the four, so let's go on to the second hole. <laughs> 